Good afternoon and welcome back to the Bologna Invite, Elite Invite here in Northern Italy. You are listening to the voices of Ali Thomas. I am joined by Julia Harris. Julia, why don't you tell us a bit about uh, where you're from, who you are? So I am an American currently living in Brussels, Belgium. I am actually a player at this tournament playing with Kusp Schout. And we have gotten the chance to play one of these teams that's here today, Box. Uh, we are going to play Yaka tomorrow. So it's great to see high level ultimate uh, starting again in 2022, starting really strong. We've seen some strong performances from both these teams so far. Yaka, I believe, undefeated. Um, they have uh, a game against Kuz tomorrow. I believe that's the last game. Correct. I do believe that, however... Oh, no, they lost to Valkyrie. Yes, You're absolutely they right. Sorry. They've been steamrolling this tournament. Yes. So I think we were talking about a fight for second at the moment, which is uh, Kuz and Yaka, um, which will be the final game on the stream tomorrow. Box, a um, couple more losses for them today. I believe they lost to uh, Jinx this morning. Right. Um, by a medium margin. And we'll see Mondio with a big pull to start the game. That's going to land at about the brick mark. Box coming out in a side stack, isolating Seiler. And an early turn. Yakus D-line looking to start the game with a break. Mondio picking up. Takes the under. Discus Central throws the IO. Rest of Yaka streaming through the field. Oh, low dump pass in between two box players. Takes the round, it's floating. Well collected. Oh, and a bobble off the hands of Van Wyk. Gives box a second chance to hold their offense. Favoring a vertical setup this time. Oh, and steamrollering through. Looks like there were two Yaka players who got a piece of it. Uh, but there will be a call on the play. Possibly a bit of contact on the hand before the disc. But no, she's reconsidered. She is retracting it. The turnover will stand. So Yaka with a short field to work with. Mondial walking up to the disc. Two players from the back in opposite directions, but she takes the open to Le Bon. Big arcing throw. There's two players in space. And that is a score well towed in. And it's a Yaka goal to start the game. Yes, Maria Castillo with the goal. One of their more experienced players, I would say. She's been playing ultimate for 15 years currently also living in Brussels, Belgium, and she will be playing the World Championships with Yaka this season, along with Esther Van Wyk and Chloe Vallée, who are also two more of their Belgian pickup players. Got the insider info, the Belgian <laughs> info. <laughs> <laughs> so not a clean uh, conversion for Yaka there. The wind as we've mentioned, if you've been tuning into the other streams today, has been causing havoc for quite a few teams. As the game goes on, generally there's one team that's able to adapt to it better than the other, and uh, that has an impact um, on the game to come. So Mondial remaining on. Got the D-line coming out once again. She's not pulling this time, though. And that's a big pull from Paula Baz. Oh, just under the foot of uh, Pashinga there. She gets it off to Obermeyer. Lovely floaty lead pass back to Pashinga, who finds Alder up the line. Working it up that far sideline. It's Terra on disc. Oh, wow! Layout to keep the disc alive. Complete full stretch from Alder. Finds Pashinga under once again. Obermeyer in the dump space. Obermeyer up the line. 
in a high stall situation. She puts up a Hail Mary and it is caught by Scheidler. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a, a desperation throw there, but it works out for them. Yeah, I was going to say, other than that, looks like Box was playing some pretty nice, clean offense there. And they yeah. managed to punch it in. Some fierce uh, defensive pressure from Yaka there, not making it easy for them. But And there's that fantastic layout again. <laughs> wow, real commitment, especially on uh, rubber crumb here. I know it may, uh, may look like it could be grass, but uh, especially considering it's actually been marked out with an ultimate frisbee pitch. Quite rare to find on um, artificial turf in Europe. So one all, and we'll get to have a look at Yaka's offensive line. <laughs> Maya with the pull, floating, floats over Tissen. Lebon. Dalaval. Dalaval fakes off the under. Looks like Box are coming out in a zone. A 3 3 1 almost. Oh, it's more of an arrowhead. Dalaval swings. She's on the far side. Oh, that one caught her unawares, but she managed to catch it. Tissen under some fierce pressure from Pets. Yaka using the width of the pitch a lot. Nabon. Finds Zenz. Zenz swinging. And there's the upfield shot to Tissen. She's got a deep look, but holsters. Delaval. Oh, getting the mark off balance with that fake. Back to Tissen. Zenz once more. Through the middle to Delaval. Delaval fakes off Tissen. Finds Zenz. Zenz to the end zone. Le Bon with the score. Beautiful, calm French offense. Yeah, I really like this composure that I'm seeing from Yaka playing, uh, playing against a zone. They really are not afraid to swing it from one side of the field to the other and wait for the right option until they can break through the cup. Really nice to see. We have seen in the past some uh, somewhat spicier zone offense from Yaka. They do uh, not shy to throw overheads, but here just working it very calmly, flat passes all the way, finding the opportunities as they present themselves. So now the D line gets another chance to maybe get a break. Mondieu with the disc. can see the Eurodisc flag in the background just fluttering in that wind, which has been so changeable and so gusting throughout this weekend. Mondial sending the disc. Court centers to Obermeyer. Nice swing to the far sideline. Centers, Le Mercier. Oh, and intercepted, and neither player wants to let go of it, so it looks like it'll be a little bit of a discussion about who had it first. And it looks like LeBorn is going to concede that it was indeed Van Week that had it first. Gets it off. Van Week has it once again. Yaka. Favoring a flat zone of their own and a shot through the middle. Oh, well kept in play by the skin of her teeth. Seems like Box saw Yaka's use of the width and copied it. And Obermeyer now. Oh, just bouncing off the hands, but it's kept in play. Van Week once again, she's been on the disc, it seems, every other or every third past this point, but it's quite static. There's been a foul call upfield maybe just a little bit of a uh, little bit of pushing and shoving in the end zone and now she dropped the disc so the question is going to be did 
the call affect the play? Mm. That's a very good point. Technically, during a, a stoppage, no turn is possible, but if it did not affect the play, as it seems they are deciding, and some hand signals for turnover happening. So the disc is back in, and Yaka on offense. Oh, and immediately giving it back. Just a bit of an overthrow there. Pashinga. Oh, interception. Little bit of toing and throwing happening so far this point. And once again, Box have a chance. Maybe a little bit of tiredness creeping in now. We're getting to a few turnovers apiece this point. Obermeyer picking up the disc. Swings to Pashinga. Oh, and too far, but she's got back up. A <laughs> little bit of a grimace there from Alder as she strains to get the disc. Scheider. Back to Pashinga. Find Steinhauser. Steinhauser. Dumps back to Pashinger. Pashinger looking for an up the line, but it's been marked out. Has the swing instead. Alda once again, who steps out wide. It's not quite in. Pashinger knocking on the door. Up the line marked out once again by Yaka. And it's the break side momentum that gets. Oh no, still not quite. Terra. Looking for options, not finding a great deal. Still count rising. It's to Obermeyer. Oof, and quite a lot of contact there, but no call from Obermeyer. And Mondial will pick up the disc once again for Yaka. Oh, looked like she wanted a big one there. Castillo looked off. Big floaty cross field put over the heads of all the box defenders. Up the line. It's floating. Oh, Castillo <laughs> bumping into Terra a little bit across the pitch. Mondial, usually she's the one throwing the assist, but this time it is a goal, and this point is put to rest for Yaka. Oh, beautiful score right there from Yaka. But honestly, that was a great point from both teams, I think. I was going to say I was really actually impressed with Box's field awareness, how multiple times there was a teammate there to catch a disc if uh, they didn't get it on the first look. So that was definitely a hard fought point, but Yaka was able to take advantage of the last turn, value the disc, and, and uh, get the break. So we are now at three to one. I believe, for Yaka. It seems like Yaka have not been shy to get up close and personal to get a lot of these discs. Box seemingly happy with the level of contact, but might need to be a little bit more disc hungry, especially some of these floaty passes going up that Yaka are coming down with. So pole will land at about the brick mark. Box in a vertical setup. Not a lot of options under, but eventually get it off to Zayla. Oh gosh, that was um, pets. Looking like she got a bit of contact to the head, having trouble standing up. So we'll see here, this lead pass goes up. And then she's looking towards the disc and the Yaka player is coming in. She's not able to see to avoid the contact um, from Ebert. Potentially slightly dangerous. Yeah, that's where the poach can get a little bit 
questionable. Although it's a, it's a great, it can be a great way to get a D, but if the person doesn't see you coming, it, yeah. It yeah, can if you be can't get it cleanly, if you can't you get it cleanly, it's, um, it's right. not worth it. Right. The pets is just uh, lying down now, being tended to by uh, someone on the sideline. She's making the injury call. I don't think that's a, a surprise to anyone. Um, I wonder if there will be a call on her behalf of a, of a foul, if the disc is going to stay there. Obviously, it's a, a tricky situation if you have been knocked on the head and uh, therefore can't really make a call, even yeah, though I've seen one this should be <laughs> made. I've seen this many times where the injury is so bad that everybody's just preoccupied with uh, getting the player well, but then, then the play still stands, even if, even if it shouldn't. Looks like Hebert and Mondio, uh, Mondio is there on the sideline and uh, maybe had a perspective on whether or not it was a foul. We've got Pashinga who is on for Pets. I think what it seems to be they're deciding is that the disc should perhaps go back to the thrower since we cannot ascertain Pets not able to give her perspective. Ebert, I think, saying the disc could go back, but uh, Pashinger doesn't look so sure. It looks like Pashinger is making the contested sign, but Ebert is making the uncontested sign. There we go, foul uncontested. So Ebert will be the one to tap the disc into play, and we're off. And it's another lead pass. It's curving round. Wow. Well read by Schneerl. Schneerl on the front of the end zone. She's got Paschinger. And puts one out into space for Paschinger to run onto amidst a crowd of Yaka players. And a box score to make it 3-2. Yeah, those small, tight passes. That's what you got to do when you're playing against a team like Yaka that will cover all of the easy open side throws and even the break throws, even the easy break throws. So you got to kind of, you got to kind of sneak it in there and that's exactly what they did. Well deserved score by Box. And indeed, um, good on them for keeping their heads. It's never easy seeing your teammate kind of take a knock like that. So we'll see there just fingertips outstretched by uh, Pashinga to keep the goal. And it looks like there will be a timeout called Had five points now. The sun is beating down. We're nice and cool here in the shade, but I think both teams maybe just need a minute to uh, collect themselves. <laughs> Yaka doing their chant. Looks like whatever they needed to say has been said fairly quickly. Box still huddled up. Yeah, need that extra time to figure out how to try and take the lead in this game. I think they're they're doing really well so far. They had a bit of a rough day yesterday, uh, losing on, I believe it was Universe Point against Bristol, and then had uh, and then had another had, had had difficulty coming back from that, coming off of that into their last game, which they lost by quite a bit, but. Today they're coming back. They're really coming back strong. They had a they had a strong showing against uh, against Jinx, and uh, looks like they're carrying that energy right into this game. So hopefully they'll be able to keep it up, and we should we should have ourselves a really nice tight game, which is what we love to see. Indeed, and it's exactly what both teams want. You know, the majority, if not all, of these teams here are going to the World Club Championships in Cincinnati this July. And every player, every coach I've spoken to has talked about the importance of using this tournament to build chemistry and build those connections. You know, it's not about winning. It's not about finishing in a certain position. It's just about improving, learning, learning from your losses, learning from your victories and getting stronger. Right, especially for these teams that are taking pickup players. 
Yeah, or players who maybe don't live in the same country as the team they're playing with. <laughs> oh, that's a high one. I think she was in the air and she thinks so too. So that uh, one will be called out. Great attempt of towing the line though. You'd love to see it. Yeah. Oh, great angle. You can see she's just in the air as she catches it. So we'll have the box D line looking to convert and equalize. And that one is going to be very high. Mondio will snaffle it out ahead of Scheidel. Catching it with momentum. Oh, almost <laughs> throws the disc to the floor, just uh, but manages to hang on to it at the last second. Great snag from Mondo up the line, who goes for one of her trademark across the pitch floaters, but it's going to float out too far in front and Box have another shot at their offense. Very nice throw. I think maybe she was hoping that it would float a little bit longer in order for somebody to be able to catch up to it. But this wind is a little bit unpredictable. And we've seen her complete that throw so many times this weekend. I guess they can't all be winners. Can't win them all. Oh, inside shot well hung on to by Steinhauser. Swings to Paschinger. A little bit static from the stack, but bailed out by Hoflecher. For Flecker, for Terra. Working it up that far sideline. They've had a lot of success with that so far. Alder. It's too far out in front. It's too far out in front for two box players. Yaki immediately looking long. Paula Bars in the end zone, but instead dumping it off to Anais. And there it is a score for Le Bas. And Yaka, at the second time of asking, keep their offense and score. And that is what they do. They, they punish teams for turning over the disc by moving it up very quickly and, and punching in the score. So Box is going to have to make sure that they really value the disc these next few points. I will say, a lot of the games that we've seen so far on the stream have had uh, points which could be charitably described as a turn fest. <laughs> the wind, of course, not helping with, uh, with that situation. So sometimes it's all about field position and where the turn happens, you know. Right. If you're gonna turn, make sure it's not in your own half, make sure it's not near your end zone. Or their end zone, I suppose. So we'll see Box's O-line coming out. Wind shortening that pull somewhat. Box in a horizontal looking to isolate one player and eventually get it off to Zyla. Zyla dumping to Maya. Maya. Oh, and a lot of contact from Tissen there. No call from Brandle. Tissen just charging through. So Yaka setting up with a horizontal of their own. Tissen creating space. Oh, and the throw is too high, but there are plenty of Yaka players there to back it up. Zenz finds Tissen in the middle. Tissen immediately looking to swing, and it's up that break side. And I think that's, uh, no, it's Ebert, apologies, catching it in the far corner of the end zone, and Yaka starting to pull away. Once again, they did not waste any time off of that turn. They got right to work. And we've seen in games yesterday, in the game just before, a three-point lead, a four-point lead doesn't necessarily mean much, but in this situation, it does look like Yaka are finding their groove, finding their comfort zone, and uh, Box are struggling slightly. 
No, you're definitely right about that. It, it uh, Pulling away is not a guarantee that you're going to win the game. So Yaka is going to have to keep up what they're what they've been doing these past few points if they want to continue. We actually, uh, uh, Kusp Shout, we started a game, the game yesterday against Valkyria with, I want to say, a four-point lead, and they came back to win on Universe. So really, Ooh. anything can happen. Yep, and then, of course, the 12-point uh, <laughs> streak of Clapham against Ranala, which oh I think boy. will go down in history. Oh, just fingertips and then bouncing off the hands of Steinholzer, not helped out by the wind. And Yaka looking to continue their punishment of box here. She's got Castillo under. Couple of cuts to the same space. Labas with the disc on the sideline, looking for, for Castillo. Big sweeping round. Oh, Paul Labas goes to ground but cannot get it. Box with another chance to hold their offense. Big shot going up, but it's a bit off target. I think even if Tara had continued her cut, um, it would not have been catchable. So back and forth we go. And we'll see that layout again. Oh, oh great form, great nice. attempt. But what else would we expect from Porta Pass? Mondio. I think I missed something. That disc was slightly further away than it was. <laughs> but there we go. Levas on that far sideline. Finds Lebon. Lebon looks to the end zone. I think trying to find uh, Becca, but a bit short. Box. A couple of meters outside the end zone. No, no, exactly on the end zone. Oh, kicking the cone. <laughs> Hate to see it. Oh, another backup. An overthrow, no, but uh, good awareness. Fantastic oh, deep cut. Get it? Go and lay out. Oh, <laughs> fantastic chase from Scheider. But Disc just too far out in front of her. And I think she had too much momentum to consider a layout. Sometimes you need to just be slightly slower than your top speed in order to execute it. Mondial picking up. Yaka immediately looking to get the disc moving. Oh. And it looks like Lebon tried to get that going. And here we have Box knocking on the door of their end zone. Pashinga bobbles the disc slightly, clutching it to her chest. Obermeyer. Oh, and it's off the hands. Oh, that's unfortunate. It was right in the bread basket oh, for Alda. But another turn. I've lost count now. I haven't been keeping track. I would say maybe three apiece. <laughs> On that far sideline. Oh, huge put from Paula Baz to a streak in Castillo. What a layout! Oh! I thought she had that, an incredible play. I thought she had that too. What a great bid. And that is what Castillo loves to do. She loves to go deep. And I am sure that is not the last time we're gonna see her do this. <laughs> I would not be surprised if you're right. And Obermeyer with a layout of her own, but it's one for one with a layout incompletions. So we see Box give their own short field turn to Yaka, and you can be sure that Yaka are putting, looking to put this in straight away. So Paula Bar's picking up. Two cuts from the back, that those two options. Bar's looking to the middle, and then finally behind to LeBorn. LeBorn back to Bar's. Fakes the IO. Oh, it's a hammer. Is it too big? It is. And Paula has already got her back turned. As soon as she threw it, she knew it was too big. The wind is most certainly not making this easy on either team. You can say that again. So <laughs> Orbermeyer will walk the disc up to the front of the end zone and boxes Wurtstack. We'll have another go. It's high. Pashinger boxes out Castillo and takes it down. Working it up the near sideline now.
nice calm play in what was a high stall situation. Hoflach on disc. Obermeyer looked off. Alda. Two options. One of them gets it. Steinhauser. And that one is just going to sink onto the floor too far out in front for Paschinger. This point is certainly going on. I wonder if we will see a timeout call here. And a timeout has been called, I think, a sensible decision uh, from Mondial. Both teams have been grinding for quite a while. Here's a chance to just catch their breath, refocus, and uh, maybe have a chat about what they can do to put this point to bed. Despite all of the turns, I really like that we're seeing from both teams a continuous fighting spirit. Neither team is giving up. And on every turn, you can see they are <clears throat> not throwing the disc away easily, making good decisions, looking for the right pass. Absolutely, there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of rushing that we can see. I think there are execution errors, but they are mainly being um, exacerbated by the wind. There's a lot of very calm, very good, very sensible ultimate being played here, as you would expect from um, players of this level, teams going to Worlds. So we'll see what adjustments Yaka are going to make on offense, what adjustments Box are going to make on defense. I would imagine knowing Mondion, she's going to want to set up a pull play, which involves her throwing it deep to someone. And we would love to see that as well, or at least I would. Can't speak for you. <laughs> well, I'll be interested to see actually, because uh, with the wind, uh, see if they choose to work it up the field slowly or to set up a deep cut. What's your money on? I would say, I think, I think you're right. I think that they're gonna go for the deep throw. So setting up in a horizontal look. So I imagine we will have a deep option at the very least, but Box probably looking to set up a deep poach. And indeed, it looks like the nearest player on this sideline is being unmarked and we have a both a deep and an under poach. But passing out is quite far over towards the far sideline. We've got a violation call. Maybe started a little bit too soon. Just want to go. <laughs> Let me run. <laughs> Mondial faking aggressively gets it off up the line. And it's a bobble, the curse of the time over. And Obermeyer immediately putting it deep. Gives it right back to Yaka, who maybe have a second crack at uh, setting up whatever their tactics were they discussed during the timeout. Oh no, another uncharacteristic turn. Oh no is right, and or rather an oh yes if you are boxed, <laughs> <laughs> who have a chance. Uh, it's always a shame to see when a disc is turfed. You, I always hate to see that no matter no matter who it happens to, I don't ever wish that on anyone. Of course, of course. And there it is. And Box scream in delight as they finally put an end to this point, which I think had five turns each, 10 total. And in the end, all it took was one pass into the end zone, a present from Yaka tied up with a bow. Here is a turnover on your end zone line. And now those 14 players can come off the pitch and have a little bit of a rest. Very nice. It looks like all of that patience and composure paid off. It really can be difficult to stay in these points mentally, especially when you see things like simple drops and missed passes because of the wind. It can be very difficult to fight through that. So really props to Box for, for <coughs> coming out, coming out with the, with the point here. There have been a couple of clean points here. We've also had a couple of, of very turny points as well. I think the way this game is going, the team 
with grit is going to be you know coming out on top here or at least it's going to be a test of how much grit and how much determination um, you can show as a team I agree so taking a run up Maya with the big pull floating down Floaty pass to Tissen, who was all alone. Catches it in stride. Scott Dabin. Oh, and I think they call those pressure Ds. It didn't look like the box player got a hand to the disc. Maybe we'll see again on the replay, but just enough to cause Hebert to fumble. Let's see it here. Yup. Don't think she got a hand to it. I don't know, maybe your eyes are better than mine. No, I didn't see any contact either. Yeah, in the States, we call that intimidy. <laughs> intimidy. That's yes. excellent. I like that. Oh, my God. Another well saved. Save. <laughs> it's called up. But I think there was some contact on Le Bon, who is walking off the field, holding her nose. So we will have a substitution each. And we are back in play. Fantastic chase down from Zyla. Rest of box catching up. Little bit crowded around the disc. Gets it off to Maya. Schneider puts up a floater, but it's batted away. Oh, if she chased that, she could have maybe even got, uh, got the seconds, but... Yaka now with a chance for another break. We've got Delaval walking to the disc and Yaka setting up in a side stack. That was a great idea though. That is kind of Valkyria's approach too, is get the disc to the tall girl in the end zone. And it's been working for them, so not a bad idea. For sure, for sure. Tissen. Gets the swing off to Delaval. Oh, the jump and a spin. Oh, great one-handed catch by Dabin. Looking for Delaval. Little split step from Delaval up the line, but a poach will prevent that from uh, going off up the line. Swings instead. Well read. Shot through the middle. She's got the deep, but looks off. Dumps instead to Tissen. Zens, and there's a pick call. Players getting a chance to uh, flex their guns, show off the winter gains. Zens finds Delaval. Delaval round, it's high, but pops down for Meisel. Meisel on the far side line, and look at that movement from Delaval up the line. And a high break caught. Yaka extend their lead, 6-3. And that is Chloe Vallet who came with the disc. She has been a solid cutter for them this weekend. Very, very speedy. Always able to get open on the force side despite uh, pressure from the defense. So she is definitely going to be an asset for them this season. One of the, one of the less experienced uh, Frisbee players on this team, she's only been playing for about three years, which is kind of crazy. And you would never, you would never think that just by watching her play because the girl can throw hucks. She can pull it very, very far. And she has very high ultimate IQ for somebody who has only played for three years. That's actually mildly depressing that you've just told me that. <laughs> <laughs> to be that good after three years. I know, I know. <laughs> Some might call it inspiring. I'm, I'm, I'm frankly depressed. No, I mean, it's fantastic. Do you know if she played any other sports beforehand? She was a competitive skier before oh, playing okay. Frisbee. Yes. So, um, Which is not a, something that you see a lot of <laughs> no. skiing to Frisbee, but... <laughs> Both hard on the knees, I suppose. I guess <laughs> is <so>. that common? <laughs> So Box coming out in their horizontal, isolating the player, but Yaka 
poaching off to try and prevent that isolation. Looking like they're poaching off the handers in a kind of a zony setup. The pressure works, or maybe the wind contributed to that turn for Steinhauser. So Bars just checking the disc, making sure it is uh, flat. Looks fine to me. I believe that's one of those rules that it often broken. You're not meant to change the disc and let us, unless it is actively cracked or broken. Annoying though it may be to play with a bent one. And that went over the heads of several shorter players. Oh, and then just went under the hand of Van Wyk. So Slight box miscommunication possibly as well as both Van Wyk and Castillo seemed close enough to catch the disc. So Yaka, oh, valiant bid from Obermeyer as that disc carved away from her, trying to keep it in play, but it's a short field turn for Yaka. Paula Bars walking towards the disc. Box standing up in a clamp, trying to pick up any players and make sure that the brakes aren't too easy. It works, worked to stop the first few looks. Yaka forced to reset. Looks off a streaking Mondior with an uncharacteristic drop. Box with yet another chance, and I think we're settling in for another long one here. So Yaka setting up their zone once again. Pashinger. And it goes up, but the box player is on the wrong side, and Yaka is there all the way. So at least Box have a chance to try and force a turn earlier on the field. That was a good idea, though. I think she was hoping it was going to be more inside and it would come back to the receiver. But like I said before, the wind's a little bit unpredictable. Well, you know what they say about wishes and horses. <laughs> so Mondio picking up. Looks to reset. Nice Io up the line. There's a switch. Oh. Fingertips away. Bars, middle of the field. Pashinga catching up to put the mark on. Looks like a couple of Yaka players undefended. There has been some poaching and switching from Box, but not recovering fast enough, perhaps. Mondio weaving to get free in the dump space. And that's going to be a low one to bounce off the hand of Olivier. Not an easy catch to make, especially when it's windy. So Box off. <laughs> Looks like she put that one into her knees. It's tipped, caught under high pressure from Leborn. Swinging once again, Obermeyer. Oh, streaking Castillo, can't get the D to Terra. Paschinger. She's got Hoflacher underneath, but a pick is called on Alda by Leborn. Box approaching the halfway line. Oh, looks off the up the line. It's high, it's too high for Obermeyer who jumps in the air in frustration. Bars picking up, gets it moving immediately. There's nobody home in the defense. And a D from Obermeyer on Mondial. No call, the turn will stand. What a D. And the huck. Obermeyer, it's a floater. There's two red shirts and one white, and she almost had it. Got hands to it, misread it, but no call once again. Nine turnovers and counting in this point so far. Buzz. Looking for Olivier. Olivier on the sideline. She's got bars in the dump space. It's a high one. And there is Alder to make sure bars cannot lay out to save possession. And a relatively short field turn. Pashinger picking up. She gets the open. It's floaty brought down by Steinhauser. Steinhauser with not a lot of options, not a lot of time. And into a bit of a crowd, and there's going to be a foul called by Hoflacher on Castillo.
Is she claiming it's a strip? Is that what's happening? Uh, uh, given that the fact that Castillo has just signaled a goal, that would seem to be the case. I think maybe there's a bit of discussion from LeBorn about whether or not it is a goal or... Or a drop. In, or whether it should be brought to the front of the end zone, maybe, if it's uh, a foul. That too, yes. Oh, okay, it looks like uh, LeBorn is giving her opinion. We'll see it here on the replay again. Uh, hard to tell. Yeah, very difficult to see. Hard to tell. I mean, if the I, I'm guessing LeBorn is uh, questioning whether the contact was what caused her to drop the disc or if she was kind of halfway through dropping it already. How have 45 minutes passed already? This game is going <laughs> very quick. <laughs> so it looks like it is a foul called, weirdly enough. Okay, all right, well, we're in play. Gets the break off to Pashinger. Pashinger looking to the open side, puts one out into space. And it's a score for Box to put this point to an end. What a roller coaster of turns it was. And a little bit of weirdness at the end there, but we are at 6 4. Yeah, keeping it close. And I actually think that Obermeyer deserves some of the credit for that point because she. Mo she got the disc to go from being pretty close to Yaka's end zone to being all the way over at Box's end zone, which made it a lot easier for them to punch it in once Yaka turned over the disc again. I couldn't agree more. And um, while at this level, the, the Huck and D tactic is not something you would expect to see that often, um, when conditions are like this and are making even kind of normal you know, pass is difficult, and every time you kind of tap the disc, it's swilling up into the air. Um, and if your opponents are turning over just as much as you are, then, yeah, putting the disc as far away from the end zone that they're trying to score in is, is a good tactic. Yeah. So I think we will have half at seven now because women's games are cap at 80 unless I'm very much mistaken so Yaka looking to take half box sticking with their pochi zone three at the front or maybe just pochi handler marks Tissen in the middle shot straight through to a bear Swings to the far sideline. And looking long, but that's going to be too far out in front. Box with a chance for a break. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Box is going to have to work it all the way, all the way upfield in order to get this goal. So it's going to need, they're going to need all that patience that they've, that they've had this whole game. Can they do it? Setting up in a side stack with one isolation, no, two isolation players. One coming across the middle, one coming under and receiving the disc. Zyla, box transitioning to a vertical stack now and it just bounces off the thumb of Maya and Yaka with a short field turn. Another opportunity to hold their offense. Very calmly and slowly, Delaval walking to the disc. Oh, looks for the inside, but there's a boot there to stop it. And now two in the dump space, but gets it off. And it's the forehand side backhand to Hebert. And Yaka have held their offense, not cleanly, but they've held it. Another instance here of where the huck, although although it was not a completed throw, helped them gain all those yards to end up right in front of their end zone when there was another turn. Because in this game, like you said before, having the the field the field positioning is absolutely crucial. 
when the disc is turned, it, it makes all the difference whether you're close to y closer to your end zone or closer to the other team's end zone. Yeah, absolutely. At any level, that field position, as you say, is incredibly important. And especially with all this wind today. Yeah. I think my call of this being half is whether or not it was correct, I don't know. So it looks like we'll be having a half at eight no matter what. Very nice pull in the wind. Yaka charging down. Oh, and Obermeyer putting her body to the floor once again, but it's a Yaka interception. Baz swings round to Becca. Becca shoots to the end zone. Is that, is that something? Yeah. Foul, uncontested, and a score. Little bit of discussion, but a score, and that's a very quick break for Yaka to take half. I think that's one of the quickest points we've seen so far in this game, right? Mm-hmm, for sure. And just unfortunate miscommunication there or, or mis-execution. Um, but we will see both of these teams huddle up now. I think we may be about to show you uh, a little bit of advertising. Um, so don't go anywhere, we'll be back with more action after the half. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. Okay, back to you. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Hello and welcome back to this exciting coverage of the women's division here in sunny Bologna at the Elite Invite. So we are watching Yaka in red taking on Box, who are in white and currently on your screen. Yaka, uh, so far in this half they are up 8-4, despite what the uh, scoreboard on the screen tells you. 
Um, how would you surmise this this first half so far? By the way, this is Ali Thomas and Julia Harris, who's going to tell us about the first half now. In one word, wind. <laughs> 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 but uh, but yeah, I, as I was uh, saying over the break, it's a. Uh, it's great to see, especially as a spectator, uh, there has been no shortage of layouts and hucks, and those are things that are making this game really hard to watch, but it's also making the points a lot longer. So we'll see if that continues in the second half or um, how the teams adjust. And we're seeing here an early turn from box. Sorry, from Yaka, excuse me. Box now on offense. And Box giving a turnover right back to Yaka, who are, of course, the reigning European champions, having defeated uh, Shout at the last European Championships. But, of course, losing to Valkyria earlier on this weekend. But of course, Euros is a long time away and we are currently just watching them play box. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh, what a great beautiful. take under high pressure, knocking on the door of the end zone. Stall count rising. She's got a free dump, which she now takes. Little dump back. And great flow, great continuation, fantastic end zone play from Box. That was really, really smooth. That was impressive play. And I, what I really like is that they're continuing to take those deep shots. Even though it's risky in the wind, they are playing very confidently. And I love to see that. And it just goes to show if you, if you keep pushing and you keep making the right decisions, um, at some point it'll pay off. So there we saw that Hawk was beautifully put into space and uh, and well read and caught by the defender uh, to give Box the first point in the second half. Mm -hmm. And uh, starting off, starting off as they uh, starting off the half rather as they mean to go on. So we'll see if Yaka can respond with some energy of their own after that display. So apologies to everyone watching on YouTube. We're having some difficulties with our replay camera at the moment, so we're just going to try and switch it around. Um, the more people who support us on Patreon, the better equipment we can buy to bring you better coverage. So Yaka's O-line now. Oh, and an interception from Strida. Oh, but then can't hang on to it at the second time of asking. She puts her hand to her chest to indicate it is her bad. And, but that was some great flow they had going. I Sorry. believe that was Schnedel with the D. Oh, apologies. An eight and a nine look quite similar on the back of shirts. Definitely. <laughs> Just want to give credit where credit is due. <laughs> no, well done, well done. Um, looks like a foul on by the mark. And tapped back in. Faking and jinking gets it up. Beautiful under. Oh, fakes the big one. Swings instead to Zenz. Zenz de Laval. All the way around. On the far sideline now, Valley. Who shoots to the end zone. Shot for goal, but it's too far. I was not lying when I said the girl can hug. <laughs> <laughs> Never doubted you for a second. And that was definitely a, you know, a high IQ option, but um, I think wind making it trickier than it normally would have been. So box setting up their vertical stack. So working it through the front of the end zone now. 
And yet another turn. But, but there there's a Yaka player on the floor who doesn't look like she's having a good time. This game has not felt like a physical game, and yet we've had several instances where players have ended up on the floor. I believe that is Ebert. I think something may be wrong with her ankle. Yep, she is hobbling. So she will be supported off the field, carried off the field by her teammates. With applause. I wonder if the the turf field is at all to blame for any of these injuries. I know that um, statistically, in the US, uh, on some of the field complexes that we have, they actually make sure that women play more on the grass fields than men do, because apparently, statistically, the chances of women getting injured on turf are higher than That's men. That's interesting. Not sure why, but. There's a theory about um, football boots. Oh, wow, what a D by Schneider. She's on fire at the moment, my God. Is that her second D this point? That is her second D this point, but it's all for naught as it sails over the head of Obermeyer. So Yaka walking slowly. There have been a lot of turns this point. But uh, Schneidel doing bits for her team at the moment. Delaval on the disc. Very active mark from box. Tissen to Valet, who drops it. So oh, streaking deep, but Overmeyer not taking the option, chooses a safe under instead. Up the line to Obermeyer, safely collected. Working it up this near sideline, very nicely now, puts it out into space. Too much space. Too much space. <laughs> she almost had it. Yeah, great attempt as well, the commitment from this box team. They really are not afraid to put their bodies on the line and on turf as well. It's no joke. You can end up with some very nasty friction burns. But you can see they really, really want this game. Tissen has Zens wide open. No one seems to have uh, noticed that she's there. There we go, catching up. Working it through the middle. Valet to Delaval. Zen's still mostly unmarked. Valet going almost every other here. <laughs> Faking still count rising, gets it back to Delaval. Swings back to Valet. Zen's. Slowly but surely up the field in fits and starts. Delaval pointing to where she wants it, but there's only box player there. Valet once again. And a pick called. Looks like Lebon was just maybe a little bit too free. Looks like Schneider will catch up. So right on the cusp of the end zone. Valet streaking to the break side. Is not taken on. Delaval. Back to Lebon. And there's Valet. She's so free. She gets the score. What a point that was for her. <laughs> Absolutely. She dominated. And it's interesting to see kind of Yaka seems to have switched up their style a little bit from the first half where uh, we were seeing longer passes and now we're seeing uh, we're seeing the the small passes, give and go kind of play, which seems to be working very well for them, especially for Valet. Yeah, I mean, you said, you know, she could throw hucks and receive hucks, but Yaka seeming to find success, at least in, in these last few points, with getting that momentum from one side of the pitch to the other and then uh, continuation from there, whereas Box favoring a little bit more, working it up in a, in a thin slice of the pitch. Right. So nine to five, it's been a game of, you know, hotly contested all the way through. I feel like this is one where 
someone in the spirit circle is going to say that the scoreline didn't reflect the the uh, the game. Maybe. Indeed. Cliche yeah. though it is. They <laughs> they do seem to have pulled away a little bit. Let's see how Box responds. Not a lot of time left in this game. We've got 15 minutes <laughs> or so. So Yaka with their three at the front, three in the middle, one at the back zone. Big shout from Baz. Box trying to stretch it wide and then Schneidel deep coming under now. Paschinger all across the field to Steinhauser. Oh, beautiful shot through the middle. And once again, past those handler marks. Yaka switching into match defense. Oh, what a take. Great bid. Dienstbeer, haven't said her name much this game, but a heroic play there. Paschinger, lovely inside shot. Beautiful flow from Box. Couple of meters outside the end zone now. Oh, just collected by the skin of her teeth. This is Alda on the front of the end zone, looking for options, found one. Some beautiful, beautiful flow from Box. They are rightly delighted with that score. You can tell that Box spends time working on their handler resets because those have been almost flawless, I want to say, this game. They have really been working it well between the handlers, and what we saw at this point was that they were doing really well on their continuation cuts, and that allowed them to break through those poaches up the middle of the field, and they did a little bit of uh, a little small ball of their own, if you will. Mm, mm -hmm. I think that's the thing about box is when it works, it's great. When they get that flow, when it's moving, when you know, the wind isn't making the disc kind of pop up and down. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful offense. But unfortunately, that eight defender, eighth defender has been getting in the way for them a little bit. I mean, for both teams. Um, but points like that show us that box is absolutely a force to be reckoned with. They've also been doing a good job putting pressure on Yaka. So let's see if they can, uh, if they can get a break here. Yeah, they're certainly making uh, one of the best teams in Europe look like they're having difficulty. You know, conditions aside, it's it's not it's not all the wind. It's not like Yaka are turning themselves. It's it's the pressure from from box. So this pull is gonna fall just out of bounds and be walked into the middle by Carly Tissen, who's a German import and longtime international German player. Currently does a lot of work coaching youth camps, bringing the next generation of ultimate players into the scene. Box with a very poachy setup and it forces a high level, uh, sorry, high stall throw, which is capped in by Delaval. No mean feat. Tissen streaking up the line. Schneidel trading behind. Working up the far sideline now. Le bon. Sorry, not Le bon. Kea. Bali. To the middle. Zenz. Fakes off Tissen. Asking her to move somewhere else. Kaya Knudsen looking to the end zone. But not quite in. One more pass at least. And there it is, lovely Io shot to the center. And Yaka under a bit of pressure, just seemingly outpacing Box in that point. So we're at 10 to six. Yaka four points up. And we're approaching the last 10 or so minutes of this game. I'm not sure we'll get to the 15 point cap. Yaka putting their D-line on once again. 
I think Yaka's O-line there did a, has been, I think you can see that they've been doing a good job of adjusting to the wind. They seem to move through, um, move up the field very confidently there. And uh, it's unlike the first half where we saw a lot of like, a lot of hesitation. And that's what this tournament's for. It's, uh, it's to prepare for these kinds of conditions at the World Championships, potentially. Yeah, I mean, we know we all know what happened in the last World Championships where the final had to be played indoors due to a literal hurricane. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't <laughs> happen again. <laughs> yep, yep, so who knows, all of this playing on uh, artificial turf may be very needed <laughs> for uh, Cincinnati. <laughs> so, working their way through Yaka's zone once more making it look easy oh gosh well caught in a little bit of a bobble but hung on to Pashinga goes to her knees to get that low one oof and uh, unable to save that disc looks like Alda kind of threw herself into Van Wyk there a little bit of a discussion and some smiles And the turnover will stand. Tapping the floor in Mondio, pointing to the break side. But she's got a free-ish dump. Finds Castillo instead. Castillo to Van Wyk. Castillo making shapes. Yes, oh my God, Maria. what a play. <laughs> I mean, you said earlier, Julia, that we're going to see more of that from her. And you were absolutely right, getting flat out horizontal and still running in the dump space, still making herself useful after that play. Wow. So, Yaka still with possession after that uh, shoelace level grab that LeBorn scoops up from the floor. Castillo up the line. Feet away from the end zone. Finds a big round. And what a point for Yaka. What a point for Castillo, I want to say. She absolutely showed off all of her experience there. She hasn't been making a ton of noise on all of the points, I guess, as one of the newer players on this Yaka squad for this year. But when they need her to, she can absolutely step up and... And uh, I mean, we saw her make a number of amazing plays there with from the layout to the upline cut to the cross field swing into the end zone. She is an incredible player and she is gonna do great things for them uh, at the World Club Championships this summer. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's already doing great things for them here. <laughs> I can only imagine what she's gonna be like in three months. So. Looks like we've got some of the offensive players on the defensive line. I'm not sure if Yaka have got set lines as it were. A little bit of fluidity here, maybe still kind of working out who fits in where for this season. So we are at 11 to six. And shout out to all of the Box and Yaka fans in the YouTube chat. Do subscribe to us if you want to join in that chat and cheer on your teammates. Well, not teammates, but friends and pals. Obermeyer all alone in the handler space. Finds a swing. Schneider gives and goes. Back to Obermeyer. Catch the disc, it looks though it was hurtling towards the floor, aided by the wind. Nice throw into space, stays up. Obermeyer again, looking for a shot to Zyla. Finds the far side and then, oh wow, wow. Tissen almost tipped that. Schneidel hesitated but managed to get it again. Finds Tira, and that one's gonna end up on the floor. Looked like she was just going for a little pop pass but not enough spin on it to prevent the wind from shoving it into the floor. So we've got Meiser heading towards the dish. She's got Tissen in the dump space. Tissen charging up the line, well marked out by Serna. It's floaty, it's kept in, 
bei Knützen. Dalaval. She's got Valet in the end zone, but too many white shirts there. Swings round. Oh no. Just looks like she if she'd gone for that with two hands, she would have had it, but it went over her fist. Box wasting no time in getting the disc moving once again. And the big throw goes up. Miss Reed from Valet. She slowed down a little bit too early. Box with a huge gainer. Terra on the disc. Rest of her team there. Little pop pass to Schneider. Slightly disorganized. And it's a miscommunication. There is a box score. And I think Yaka aren't really sure what happened there. Great, great offense from Box. Especially great performance from Sinead at that point, I want to say. She has been an anchor for them in this in this game. Um, both On both sides of the disc, defense and offense. And, and Box is continuing to put up those deep shots because it is working for them. Mm-hmm. So, a very crucial hold for Yaka, having just conceded a break. They are down but not out, I think, as the saying goes. Four points, especially with the number of turns that we've seen in these points, is not, you know, an unrecoverable amount. Definitely not. Definitely not. So, Box's D-line storming down to meet Yaka. Mondeo to Baz. Very deep horizontal stack, leaving lots of space for the cutters, uh, sorry, the handlers to do their thing. This is almost like a, oh, oh she got a piece of that on the mark, but not enough. And Mondeo sends it long. There's going to be big pressure, but the sticky hands prevail. And that is some lovely, lovely play from Yaka. And that time we did see the disc float like she wanted it to. That was, that was perfect execution by both the thrower and the receiver. And I want to say the wind helped a little bit in that case. Or probably for Mon Dieu, she probably being the experienced player that she is, knew mm. exactly what she was doing and knew exactly how she would have to throw it in that wind. Yeah, learning from your mistakes. You know, she'd had one disc which hadn't gone exactly where she wanted it or, you know, it met the wind in a way that she, you know, obviously hadn't intended. And there we go, second time of asking, bam. So Box is really going to need this hold here if they want to stay in this game. Yeah, they cannot afford any more trades. They need a break to be able to even be in with a chance of um, closing this now five-point gap between them and the ladies from Paris. I really like that offensive look from Yaka, though, just keeping the cutters out of the way and letting the handlers weave it up the pitch. So Tissen to pull, lets one rip, floats for a long time. Zyla sent it to Obermeyer and it's over the hands of Steinhauser, not the tallest player and couldn't get up high enough to keep that one in play. So Yaka with a short field turn, looking to close the door on any Viennese hopes of uh, catching up. Delaval fakes the around. Fakes again, finds the middle. Meiser, lovely shot round to Dabal. Dabal to Tissen. Tissen fakes the round, has the IO. Oh, 
and Knudsen leaps forward to get it and leaps out of the end zone in the process. Looking for Meister, who's juking in the dump space. And it looks like there may have been a call and the stall count wasn't dropped. That is my interpretation of the body language. <laughs> and not much else, <laughs> but some discussion. Perhaps a rules clarification. So it looks like if there are if you don't drop the stall count, it's technically a fast count. So two marking infractions. Stall goes to zero. We're back in play. Delaval streaking on the break side. Knudsen not able to make the play. Tissen free in the dump space. Oh wow, what a fantastic interception! Right on the end zone line by Zyla. Straight to Obermeyer who shoots long. But Tissen is there to steal it away from Schneerl Yaka once again on the offensive and a huge inside out huck. It's floating. Is it going to be too far? Unfortunately, it's going to be both too far and on the wrong side, or at least trailing to the wrong side. So box once again on offense with the whole field to go. Yaka setting up there flat. Handler Mark, off over the head of the intended receiver. But Schneidler snaffling it. Swings across to Obermeyer. Handler Mark's causing a bit of trouble for Box, but not too much. They've swung it over to the other side of the field now. Zyla to Schneider. Schneider to Steinhauser. And Steinhauser to the floor. Jaka looking to capitalize and immediately score, which they do. Not the cleanest point, but it's looking like it's going to be harder and harder for Box to catch up this deficit. So I believe it will now be a game to 14. However, I have been calling, oh, just bounces out of the hands there and then immediately picked up by Zenz. Yaka's end zone offense has been very, very calm all weekend. And we saw a beautiful example of it there. Just happy to dump and swing and dump and swing until an opportunity presents itself. So not too much longer left in this game. And we will be bringing you more action um, from the Bologna invite. If my internet connects, which currently it isn't. So Yaka defense looking for a break to well and truly put this game to bed. Sticking with their flat handler marks, which Box have been sometimes breaking through with ease and sometimes struggling with. Here is an example of them breaking through it with ease, but then letting themselves down with a simple drop from Brandre. Hands closing too early, the disc bouncing off the ends of her fingers. And Mondio throwing to a heavily covered uh, Le Bas, and it's batted away by Brandl to make up for her drop earlier. That's too high, but well read. Pick is called by Pashinger. Disc coming in on one. Oh, attempted D my Mondio. But Terra hangs on. It's a lovely lead pass. But a great D by Lebas. Uh, sorry, Olivier. So Mondio setting up a horizontal, motioning her team to come further under. 
immediately centers. And they are now in the difficult position of having to work it all the <laughs> way up the field. Oh, <laughs> nice hammer from uh, Mondio, but unfortunately nice is not the same as a completion. Looks like there'll be a bit of a discussion about whether there was maybe contact on the throw. Uh, but something, something happening. There's been some handshaking going on. Looks like the turnover will stand. And Box have the disc. Just a couple of meters behind the brick mark. Getting the disc moving immediately. Maya. Oh, and it bounces off the hands of Alda. Looks like she might have been able to try and get it on the second attempt, but alas, it was not to be. So Yaka once again. Setting up in their horizontal. Mondio not picking up this time. She put herself in the cutting space. <laughs> and the disc will be going out of the sideline, never to come back in. So Maya will get the disc very close to the end zone. You could hear Box cheering on the sideline there, as I would also be very, very happy if the turn happened right outside my end zone. as any ultimate player would be, I'm sure. <laughs> Apart from the ones wearing red shirts on the field at the moment, and indeed on <laughs> the sideline. Right <laughs> so lots of movement, possibly too oh, much, but what grab. a snag from Sophie Alda. And a great reset cut as well. Oh, looks like there was a bit of contact from behind, but maybe one of those situations where, yes, there was contact, but I should have caught the disc anyway. Thanks, uh, Brando. So, Mondio on the disc. Oh, <laughs> well kept up by Yaka. Immediately looking long and touched. Dinked again. It's one on one in the end zone. So she looks back, trying to find Castillo, but there's a lot of white and a lot of confusion. There we go. Oh, but gosh, that looks like it bounced off the turf and into her face. I hope she's uh, lying down more through exhaustion than pain. Yes, there we go. Hard to believe they're still running. And off they go. Castillo desperately trying to catch up. It's 1v3, but what a catch! What a catch from Helen Terra. Oh, is it going to be kept up? It is not. Wow, that was an incredible chase down and catch, though. We're still going. We're still in this point. Yaka and Box are still running. Mondial gets the break round despite a diving Peshinger. <sighs> Dump it back. It's too high. Second attempt. Wow, incredible read and sky. I think Yaka is tired, but Mondio is still running. Not quite inside the end zone. And a scuba! Oh, that would have been incredible. And Vele on the sideline rubs her face with her hands. This point feels like it's going on forever as another big put goes up. It's on target, but this time Terra cannot hang on. One Yaka player is crouching down on the field. This is a mammoth point, and Mondio, I think, wisely calls the timeout. You can see the frustration here from the Yaka players. They were so close to getting that point. I mean, both teams very close to getting that point on what feels yeah. like numerous occasions. Yeah, but that was, I think, the right decision from Box to just immediately put it and uh, make it more difficult for Yaka um, rather than keeping the disc at their end zone. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this feels like a universe point. You know, there's, there's a six point difference between these teams, but you wouldn't know it to, uh, to have just watched the last 10 minutes or so of, of uh, however long this point is. We're approaching the 90 minute mark. 
and I think we are potentially a bit um, bit behind schedule. So coming up next, uh, should have been three minutes ago, but this game is uh, running over a little bit. We will be bringing you Guayota from Spain versus Catch-Up from Austria. This will be the first time Guayota have been on the stream. So Box clapping and uh, cheering each other on in their huddle. Couldn't quite hear what they were chanting, but seems to be getting them amped up. Whereas a much quieter um, shout from Yaka, more focused. Don't want to be too hyped on offense. You want that calmness, that coolness. So Yaka setting up in their horizontal, uh, no, sorry, a split stack. They may be looking for another handler weave. Aline Mondial, stalwart of this French side. So no handler weave this time. Le Bon finds Becca. Becca looking for Le Bon up the line, but bounces back. Can't get the round off. So a stall out called. Wow, incredible effort from Box. And there's a bit of confusion as the stall out looks as though it was uncontested, which would mean that it would go back a couple of meters further and on the sideline but incredible defensive box to get that right after a, a timeout yes great pressure on the mark from Alda so it looks like they're setting up oh, okay because they need to go back to where they were when the when the stall out happened I see Disc has been tapped in, so the play is now live. And we have Maya walking up to the disc. Very early cut, possibly too early. Oh, Pershinger has the disc stolen from her by Castillo, but there is a call on the play. Pashinga and Castillo will have a little bit of a discussion. I don't know how she managed to, to snag that disc, I'll be honest. It looked like she had to reach through Pashinga to get it. Contested foul, our hand signals are telling us, so the disc will go back to the thrower, back to Maya. Floaty disc to Maya on the far sideline. Pashinga up the line but finds Hoflacher instead. Hoflinga round. It's high, it's too high. Oh. And no backup this time. Mondial has eyes on Castillo who's streaking deep but holsters. Finds Lebas. Lebas dumps it back. And then receives it again. She's got Mundio on the break side, takes the open side under instead. Decisive fake. Out of the way. And nice heads up play from Dienstbeer on defense to cut out Castillo, but Lebon is found with a big bladey flick. Shot to the end zone. It's Mondior with a diving catch. Now, is the game over? No, we have 
one more point <laughs> at least. And we are running quite behind schedule, but we'll see this assist again. Or rather, hockey assist. And there we are. Great bid from Mondio, really putting her body on the line. You can see the celebration on the sideline as well. Wow, what a mammoth point. So Yaka at double boxes score right now. The entirety of the box sideline has come on to uh, cheer on the seven going out for what could be the last time against Yaka. Apart from, I assume, uh, Mira Petz, who I don't think I have seen since she took that knock on the head. Hopefully she is being tended to by the uh, medical team. Obermaya. Yaka sticking with these flat marks, but now matching up. Oh, what a grab from Schneidel. Wow, <laughs> fingertips. You can see she's grazed her knee in doing so. Incredible commitment. Zyla fakes her mark. Beautiful inside shot, but it's too high for Desiree Serna. And it goes over onto the far sideline. Yaka looking for a clean conversion to put this game to bed after 96 minutes and counting. And a huge shot. Oh, I was gonna say if it's worth doing, it's worth doing quickly, but Box with another chance to keep this game going, keep this practice going. Zyla looking for Obermeyer, but Valet is there. Shoots instead all the way across. Schneider. Looking long. Great deep shot. Oh, absolutely beautiful and well read by Scheidel. Scheidel to Schneider. Oh, but what an interception by Delaval. Knudsen, Tissen, back to Knudsen. Knudsen looking long to Valley. Oh, bounces out the hands. <laughs> if this is another mammoth point, I don't think we're ever going to get to this mixed semi final. <laughs> so, box near the Yaka end zone on the sideline in their horizontal setup. Schneider underneath. Oh. And that's unfortunate. Uh, Strida unable to find, or rather finding Schneidel, but bouncing out of her hands. Yaka setting up in the horizontal, quite close to the end zone. Delaval motioning up the line. Shoots. Sc scores. Scores! There we go. An end to an incredibly tough, gritty game. Um, we are going to bring you the action of the mixed semi-final in the next 60 seconds or so. So do switch over to that stream. For Julia Harris, thank you so much for joining me. Been I've been pleasure. Ali Thomas. Thank you for tuning in. See you on the next one.
safety.tv.